Welcome back. Today I'll be doing a walkthrough on how to install Turing Smart Screen Python on Windows, which is an open source software package for running a number of budget mini system monitors, including this one which can be found on AliExpress for only around $15 USD, if you don't mind waiting 3 or 4 weeks for shipping. Or it's also available on Amazon if you don't mind paying a bit more for it. There are actually a number of different models that are compatible with the software I'll be installing today, including a 5 inch model which also includes additional features as well. I previously did a guide showing how to install this software on Linux, but I didn't cover Windows, since there's already official software for Windows available from the manufacturer but a number of Windows users left comments saying they weren't satisfied with the official software and would like to use the open source software instead, but they weren't sure on how to install it. So today I'll be walking through the steps on how to get it set up on Windows 10. This should also work for Windows 11, but I haven't tested it myself, so hopefully someone will leave a comment to verify this. And since this software requires Python to run, that means this guide will also be showing how to install Python on Windows, which will allow you to run a countless number of open source Python programs that are available on GitHub. Now when I did the previous guide for Linux, I also made a written version on my website, but I won't be doing that for this Windows guide. The instructions on this package's GitHub page have recently been updated and are now easier to follow, so it would be redundant to create a new written guide. That's why today I'll just be following the provided instructions on this package's GitHub page, so let's go over there now and get started. The link is in the video description. So let's first scroll down to this section here, how to start, and click this link, then click this link. Here are the instructions. So the first thing we'll need to do is download Python. So click this link to go to the official Python site and download Python. Next, open the installer and make sure these two boxes are ticked. Now the default setting should be okay, but I'm going to click customize just to take a look. So yeah, you'll want all these check marked. Click next and these options look good so just click install to begin the installation this will take a minute or two to finish once it's done um i'm not sure if disabling the path length limit is necessary for this package but i'll go ahead and click that just in case all right so now python is installed and next we can download the project so head to the release section and go ahead and scroll down to uh, this section and you'll want to download the source code as a zip file. So let's wait for this to download. Alright, so now let's head back to the instructions. It looks like the next thing we'll need to do is install Python dependencies. Uh, but first we'll need to extract the downloaded zip file. So let's go ahead and do that. Extract all. And this will take a minute. I'll skip forward here. Alright, so now let's enter the root folder. And actually uh, we'll need to download git first before we install the dependencies. So. Go ahead and head to the official git site to download the installer for 64-bit windows. Go ahead and run the installer. Click next, next. And I believe the default settings here should be okay. So let's go next. Yeah, I'm just going to go next for an uh, uh just do the default settings for all of these looks good yeah the default settings should be completely fine all right it's installing let's skip forward 
it'll take a minute. All right. So now we can uh, go to search for the command prompt and run it as a administrator. And now we need to change directory into that folder we downloaded. So this will depend where you downloaded it, but you can just copy and paste its location. Uh, just make sure to omit the C colon at the beginning. Copy everything after that. Type CD space and paste that location like you see here. Next, we can install the dependencies with pip. So copy and paste that command. And it'll begin installing the dependencies. This will probably take a few minutes. So I'm going to skip ahead here. All right. So now it's done installing everything and we can run the program now. But first plug in the display and Windows will begin installing the drivers for it. So let's just wait a moment for the drivers to finish. All right. So now let's copy and paste this command to start the program. And here we are. So there's a few settings you can change here. This is uh, for the screen model and the size of the screen, uh, the orientation, brightness, the theme. There's a few other things here, but let's go ahead and try running it. Now, you'll probably encounter this error here, which is actually mentioned in the troubleshooting section. So I'll go ahead and show this um, so you can see the steps. But basically, all we need to do is go into the properties for two files and unblock them. So go to external Libre hardware monitor, and these two DLL files will go into properties and just click unblock and apply. Now we'll do it for the other DLL file. And that should be it. It should be good to go now. So let's go ahead and try it again. Press Control C a few times to stop the program. And now we can run it again. All right, so I'll just go ahead and save and run. And it'll take a minute to get up and running. So let's wait. And now the screen is displaying. So this is what the default theme looks like. All right, so now let's run through how to start this program automatically when you log into your computer. Uh, so first I'll go ahead and stop the program. Okay. So the first thing we'll need to do, looks like we'll search for task scheduler. So let's go ahead and run that. Then create basic task and then name it whatever you'd like. Click next. Uh, click when I log on and start a program. Okay, so now we're going to need to find where our Python X. Uh, so go ahead and control C. All right, so copy and paste or just um, I'll type in this command here. Okay, so then copy and paste the location that it was returned to you. Um, all right. Sorry, just making, I'm double checking I'm doing this correctly. All right, so paste that there. Then type main.py in the next box and then in the next box, we will give me a moment here. So you'll want to copy and paste the location of your root folder for the project. Just make sure everything looks good. OK. So check this box and then click finish. 
Now it looks like we need to change one of these settings here. Um, the run with the highest privileges. And I believe that's it. Yeah, so go ahead and click OK. Now you can test if this works correctly by clicking the task here and then simply push run. And again, it'll take a minute to start up. And if it works, then every time you log in, the screen should automatically start up. If you want to change the theme or any other settings, simply run the configuration program again like I showed before. Now one last thing I wanted to mention is there's a bunch of user created themes you can download, in addition to the collection of themes that are already provided. I covered this in my previous video and the process should be the same in Windows. So if you'd like to find out how to run custom themes, then be sure to watch my previous video. The link is in the description. Well that wraps up today's guide. If it worked for you then be sure to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any thoughts or questions then feel free to drop a comment. As always, thanks for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you guys in the next one.